But when learning online, it's just usually eat. Take a bath. <laughs> most most people don't take a bath anymore. They I'm Jessica Madrazo, your digital double wenya. And I'm Leah Madrazo. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about an issue that has been debated on by so many people. Um, it's been very problematic. A lot of people are worried about it. Not only the students, but also the parents. So today we are going to talk about online classes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so you've already started. Yeah, Your we, online classes? We started online classes last week, only uh, discussing with orientation and how to operate our LMS. Let's start with the basics, right? The basic things that uh, you need in order to really effectively learn online. Mm -hmm. okay. So, what are the things that are required by your school? So, first of all, they required uh, for online learning they required a smartphone or a desktop or laptop pc a stable internet connection uh, whether it be wi-fi or data and that's about it they require a webcam also right yeah they require us to show our faces and our webcams so that they know who's paying attention and who's <laughs> sleeping or doing something else in your opinion has there been any complaints about um, the, you know, for example, the internet or how it's being done, online learning right now? So far, uh, it's not only been the students who have been complaining, but also the teachers. So, <laughs> well, what, what are the teachers' complaints? Um, uh, mo most of our teachers aren't uh, that young anymore. So, they when you say aren't that young anymore, around how old are they? Um, they're about 30 to 40 years old. Mm -hmm. So most are not that uh, experienced with, uh, let's say, Zoom or Google Meet. So our, our school uses Google Meet, which uh, it's not that different from Zoom. Mm -hmm. There's just less, uh, less features and uh, less accessibility features. So um for example it's a bit flawed but uh, according to our teachers only the first person who has joined the meet will be able to mute and unmute everyone so i don't know how that works but if the teacher doesn't join before all the students do the first student who joins will be able to mute the teacher or other people so the, sometimes the, the teacher doesn't have control over any of those uh, situations. Uh, in Google Classroom, there are roles. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. don't know if it carries over to Google Meet. Because I don't know how they, they think that sometimes the teacher can't mute or unmute people. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how they, they, they can see the, the interface or the options. Okay. All right. Uh, in my experience with uh, Google Meet, you can mute people, but you can't um, unmute them. You can't unmute them. Yes. So they have to unmute themselves. Yes, that's what I know. Mm. Um, although uh, on, the, on the Google Meet uh, classroom that I was in, um, I wasn't really the moderator. I wasn't the, the room uh, admin. Actually, I'll go ahead and try that now. Okay. So, the things that are needed, stable internet, computer, laptop, yeah. desktop, smartphone, uh, or a smartphone, or a smartphone. Uh, camera, and a headset. Yeah, a headset. Do they require headsets or are speakers okay? Um, speakers are usually okay, but uh, sometimes there's feedback coming from the microphones. Exactly. Yeah, yes. so uh, some teachers don't have headsets. And it's a bit problematic, especially when someone forgets to mute their microphone. Yes. That happens as well. So, um, most of the teachers do have headsets, so it's good. Mm -hmm. It's just some uh, some don't 
have the uh, some don't really see it as a requirement yet okay um how about for the for the students who are on their mobile phones has there been any complaints or is it effective because um i don't know um i would really recommend that students have a laptop or or even a desktop you know even if it's an older model i think that it's still better than a mobile phone what are there any complaints about that so far um some students asked if they could use two devices so one for the laptop so that they can watch uh, or look at the powerpoint presentation and one for a phone so it can be a webcam oh for, for those who don't have any webcams yeah Okay. Uh, other students. So do they do that? They so they have two accounts in in Google Classroom. Yes. Uh, but, sorry, Google Meet. Yeah, but the teachers uh, sometimes they don't allow it because I don't know why they they just don't want multiple accounts for students. Uh, other students, I have a friend who exclusively uses a smartphone. Uh, he doesn't have any problems with his phone. It's just that his internet is he's only using mobile data. So sometimes when it's already third or is fourth period, is mobile data enough? No, it's not enough. Uh, <laughs> it usually only lasts for an hour or so. Um, his his data. Yeah. How much does I he use? I think load? it's one gig. Okay. So considering he has a limited allowance for allowance data. for data, uh, fifty pesos per one day mm -hmm. is already a lot. And it only gives one gigabyte of oh. data per per fifty pesos. So, <laughs> so it's really expensive. One R, one gig. Mm -hmm. It's very expensive. Okay. So I'm really recommending if if your child um, is um, you know is, is studying online, I would really recommend you get. Uh, Internet connection, uh, if it's possible, because in the long run, it's really more expensive to use data. Yeah. I mean, imagine 50 pesos isn't enough, right? Per yeah. day. Yeah. So it's it's actually cheaper if you get, hopefully, we get more um, options. Yes, more options. And also, there are some locations, that I understand there are some like, locations where uh, the internet isn't available yet. There are no lines. So... Uh, I hope that the ISPs pay attention because it's they have become really essential. But I'd also like for the information of of others. Um, he, this is how conferences work: video conference. So mm. Google Meet, uh, yeah, Google Meet is an example. Or you may be using Zoom. The more people that are joining, on, uh, yes, that are joining the the video conference um the the heavier the internet usage okay which is why um so we also offer an online uh learning platform at coffeebot and so i i keep on explaining that to the different schools that have inquired about it i always tell i always recommend that some of the lessons be pre-recorded and just added into their learning platform instead of a live class video conferencing all the time because it will eat up the students data and the teachers data or whoever it is is you know joining yeah. the video conference so kawawa naman ang, kawawa naman ang students it's already very expensive to purchase a new device if they don't have it plus pa the internet expense yeah. right okay so those are the requirements and our recommendations so, if possible, apply for an internet line. Although, you don't need an internet line to get internet. There are other uh, prepaid or uh, no, postpaid. Uh, postpaid is the internet line. Yeah. There are prepaid options as well. When what, you pay what are for... The, what are the prepaid options? So, in I know in Globe, because uh, some of my friends have the prepaid option for Globe. Mm. Uh, they have, uh, they're given uh, a router, a modem or router, and they just have a SIM card in that router. So it's like mobile data, except cheaper, in the long run. In the long run. Uh, so that's is, an option for 
for the others there? There is a bigger upfront payment, I think. Uh, my friend had had to pay one two nine nine, so approximately almost uh, more than one thousand to get the modem. So the only expense you'll be having is the load, and depending on your location, is the signal. Yeah, the signal. Uh, that's how strong the signal will be. Uh, so that's the only drawback. You'll have to pay uh, every time you run out of load and the signal. So that's it. So let's review. The requirements are desktop or laptop. Again, that's our recommendation instead of mobile phones if it's possible. Um, prepaid or postpaid internet. Data will be very expensive if you're going to use that. Um, webcam and yeah. headset. Instead of the speakers, headset is um, it's more ideal to avoid uh, feedback. Okay, so what are the what are the benefits so far? You think about learning online? So one benefit I can immediately think of is you don't have to go to school anymore. In face-to-face -face learning, you have to wake up almost one hour to two, one hour to two hours earlier. Uh, take a bath, eat, prepare, dress up. There's so many things you have to do. But when learning online, it's just usually eat. Take a bath. <laughs> most most people don't take a bath anymore. They just your classmates dress up. don't take a bath anymore. Yeah. Uh, they, we just dress up and go directly to the phone or the computer. So that's maybe you can wake up an hour earlier or 30 minutes at the least so that you can prepare. Uh, another thing is commuting, which obviously is, is also a lot of time. When you go to school, uh, depending on how far you are from your school, yeah. going home, uh, sometimes it's already nighttime when you get home, so because of the traffic. So um, those are some things I can think of. So th those are the pros. Yeah, some of the pros I can so, think some of. Some of the pros. Okay. Um, how about what are the things that you don't like about mm. learning online? So far, for me, um, it's just uh, depending on where you live or how noisy your Chickens workplace are. are. <laughs> yeah, how noisy your workplace is. There are many uh, background noises, chickens family if they're uh, if they're present so, so parents don't be noisy now when your kids are studying uh also sometimes you know when uh do you have an activity can't focus that uh that well compared to when you're in school because it's a different environment uh your teachers aren't there to guide you most of the time and it is just more difficult to keep track of everything you know uh, quizzes they don't it's not really it's everyone different when you take it at the same time it's everyone very takes it at the difficult same time. Uh, no no one takes it at the same time uh, depending on how the teacher gives it so the way our teacher gives it is that they just put uh, Google Forms a form on Google Forms and that's our quiz so they, oh. they usually it's it's very difficult force the students and the teachers okay because the students can uh, answer and then they can share the answers to other students who are taking the quiz at a different date or a different time and the teachers give it the teachers give uh, at least one day deadline okay so they give it you at, have enough time to share to share September 4 12 a.m. the deadline is September 6 mm. 11 59 p.m. so it's a very it's very difficult for them to moderate and uh, keep track of uh, everything that's happening. And even in assignments or quizzes, everyone can just say, share answers. It's it's a very bad uh, it's a very bad way of giving tests okay. on Google Forms. Okay. Um, I hope that there are also some schools that you know are watching this video because. Um, I'm not promoting, ha, but but I, I really do want to recommend the the learning management system that we're using. Um, so the the LMS, the learning management system that we use um, for for you know, for for our clients, for our school clients, is something that's called Moodle. 
So actually, uh, Liam has been working with yeah. us uh, during summer to set it up for their schools. Um, what's great about it is you don't have to use Google Forms anymore. Everything is there. So you can upload your lessons uh, via modules and then the lessons can be video or text. Um, students can also take quizzes there and um, it, it automatically uh, randomizes the questions. Um, if it's a math problem, um, Moodle automatically changes the numbers as well so that no, the, the questions that the students answer are never the same. Yeah, and it's randomized. So yes. you can't just... Uh, some students rely on other students. Mm. So if they ask for answers, you know, someone sends it to them. Uh, if they're lazy enough, you know, they don't read, they just look at the questions. They're going to get it wrong. <laughs> they're going to get everything randomized. wrong because, you know, some students really don't... T get, uh, some students really don't give too much effort into it. So. Um, that's what I noticed. Okay. Most people, even if they cheat, they're still gonna get a hard time uh, with, uh, with with a proper LMS yes. or a proper way of answering or giving quizzes. Yeah. Um, also, get an LMS. Make sure that the LMS that you're using automatically saves answers. Uh, because that's one problem that you encountered, right? Yeah, speaking of Yesterday that. Yesterday or the um, other day. So, of course, not all LMSs are perfect. Uh, the the LMS that we use, uh, should I name it? No. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. So um, a problem it has is that it's very unoptimized, and the students have a hard time answering quizzes there. That's why the teachers give the quizzes on Google Forms. It's very difficult to what to answer. To answer because um, their website crashes a lot during. During a quiz that we take, once we get halfway into the quiz, it just crashes. The website crashes, so all our answers are lost. Um, an attempt is used because we have a limited Limit, yeah. amount of attempts. So for example, if the teacher gives two attempts and you answer it, it crashes. It uses up your one attempt and you can't go back to it. You can't go back to where you lost it. Attempts, yeah. 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 So, um, make sure you, your LMS saves answers. The one that we set up, uh, Moodle, automatically saves the answers. So, even if you lose your internet or if your computer crashes or even if the website crashes, then uh, it's still... The, the student won't lose their answers because naman di ba lalo? For example, if it was a very long quiz, like 40 items, and they were able to answer 35, yeah. and then it crashes. It crashes wow, at, the last ta at the last moment. Yeah. But I do hope that parents also try to understand the schools, mm -hmm. as parents and the, the students, because we're all very, very new to LMS. Uh, of course, the teachers aren't that experienced. Uh, the, the schools also, uh, this is their first time to use it. Um, so, uh, if I may explain slightly as well, one of the reasons why uh, websites crash is because there are so many users and it has to be hosted at a bigger um, space. The hosting that that system uses should be really huge because of all the number of people uh, using it at the same time. So even the bigger schools, um, like Ateneo, during their first few days, the, their website also crashed. So, you know, the, the school is also still measuring the, the amount, the, the load that um, their hosting can accommodate. So we already talked about the pros, cons. Don't you miss your teachers, your classmates? Mm. Sometimes. It's, it's not really when... It's just the interaction of everyone, you know. Uh, learning still kind of works, you know, if you don't take into account the times the internet crashes or, you know, the fails in the, the LMS or the, you know, just the technical problems. So do you think um, the our time is so short no, for this? Mm -hmm. Ano po ba? Are there any specific things also that you want to mention mm. about this? The public's opinion on 
online classes. It's very, I think it's reasonable what they're asking, uh, academic freeze, but it's just not practical for, not just for the teachers and the students, it's for the whole country because we're gonna be behind on uh, the global population. Teachers are gonna lose jobs because, you know, we've stopped, we've stopped, uh, everyone stopped going to school. Many people are gonna lose their jobs. Uh, so are you okay even if it's a bit difficult right now? Yes, it, it's a compromise that we have to make. You know, it's a sacrifice that we have to uh, take into account. It's definitely not the best choice right now especially for the younger students yes because they're gonna get used to they're not, they're not gonna get it's, they're gonna have a hard time trying to adapt to a new type of learning yeah plus the internet it's not and, the best in the philippines yeah um and the devices uh especially in the provinces right yeah where their internet is bad so uh we're lucky because we're in the city yeah but there are many um, locations. Actually, what we really encourage isn't just purely online learning. So it's more of a um, multi channel. So encourage the students and the teachers to use modules and the internet and you know any other um, any other platforms or methods that they can use. Because it you know it's true in other countries um they have been conducting online classes for a while um it may not be for the entire year but there are you know it's always available for those who are not able to physically go to school so in the philippines we used to have modules i know that where you can study from home but with the use of modules so it's actually been going on already in the philippines uh we're just not super aware. They really make the birds are always there whenever we shoot no makalagot. <laughs> so I think that's that's really my my main message no? when it comes to online learning. Be patient um, with everyone. So parents, be patient with the school, the students, the teachers, and the teachers the same. You know, it's really fine to educate everyone about online learning. So when we when we um, created the online platform for the different schools, it was really difficult training the teachers to start yeah. using it. Uh, but I'm glad, you know, that, that they're starting to learn. So that means uh, in the future, they're going to be equipped with that skill. Mm. And it's going to be easier for them to adapt uh, and the students as well. Yeah. So I'm sure a lot of people will not have heard of Zoom, for example, if online classes did not happen. Yep. I, I wasn't aware of Google Meet and Google Classroom, but right now it's... Google Classroom, I think it's new. It's, it's, it's something, new. yeah, I think it's something that I, I'm not sure, not sure on research. I uh, uh, no, Google Meet was... I didn't know of it, mm -hmm. but right now it's very essential for us. Yeah. Uh, especially because of this online class. I think there are some better options, but for now, it's what's mo more uh, accessible. Yes. Okay. So, uh, actually, this, this video is not enough to discuss online learning. Maybe in the future, we'll make another video. Um, I hope that you learned something about online learning. Um, whether you're a student, a teacher, a parent, or a school, um, we'd be happy to create more materials if you ask for it. There may be a part two. Yeah. So if you like this video and if you learned something, don't forget to like, comment, and share. And look for us on our social media platforms. Uh, we're GenXYZ on YouTube. YouTube, YouTube, um, and Digital of Awenya on Facebook. Okay, so don't forget to follow, like, and share. That's everything. Yeah, that's it for this video. See you on the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye.